In this lecture, we're going to discuss intermolecular forces. Um, we often abbreviate these IMFs as well, since intermolecular forces can sometimes be a lot to write out each time. So an intermolecular force is the attractive force between two molecules. We've talked already about the attractive forces within a molecule. If you have something like water, um, there's an attraction between the hydrogen atom and the oxygen atom. And this attraction is pretty strong, and that's what holds the hydrogen and oxygen in proximity to one another. The electrons on the hydrogen and the oxygen are actually attracted to both the hydrogen and the oxygen nuclei. Um, and so they're shared between the two, and this um, forms a covalent bond. So if these uh, forces we consider strong, the intermolecular forces we're talking about are going to be about 5% the strength of a actual bond between two atoms. So these are much weaker. Um, and a large part of that weakness comes from the fact that the molecules are going to be interacting, the IMFs are the interactions between the two molecules, and they will be further apart from one another than two atoms that are in a covalent bond. And so this distance right here is greater and so the interaction is weaker. And the interaction is based on the same idea as the hydrogen and oxygen bond, which is that nuclei um, or the, the charges on these two molecules will be attracted to one another. Um, and we'll talk about the different types of that. Um, and so we can have these molecules attracted to each other because of um, uneven distribution of electrons in the molecule, which we called um, polarity um, when we learned about covalent molecules. Um, but the, the foundation of these interactions will all be the attraction between two opposite charges. So here are our actual intermolecular forces that we, we consider typically. Um, we have London dispersion forces, dipole-dipole interactions, hydrogen bonding, and ion-dipole and ion-ion interactions. In this class, we're only gonna focus on three. We'll talk about ion-dipole interactions um, when we discuss solutions. Um, and ion-ion interactions would be covered in a detailed um, discussion of um, ionic solid compounds, which would really be like salts, like solid salts, um, like your table salt. So we'll look at a London dispersion, dipole-dipole interactions, and hydrogen bonding interactions, and um, the overall strength of these increases as you go down in order. So our London dispersion forces are the weakest and our hydrogen bonding interactions are the strongest that we'll look at. Um, and, and the interactions that exist between molecules, um, so we're looking at in between multiple molecules within a sample, the number of these three interactions that exist and their overall strength will really tell us a lot about the physical properties of the sample. Um, so that'll be things like whether or not it has a high or low melting point or boiling point, um, or whether at a certain temperature it's a solid, a liquid, or a gas. So let's walk through these one by one and let's start with dispersion forces. Um, these are very weak. They're the weakest of our interactions between molecules. And here is the great thing about it. <clears throat> Almost, so all molecules have London dispersion forces that interact between them. Um, and the reason everything has them 
or I should say everything with an electron cloud, so pretty much everything except a proton. So every molecule has a cloud of electrons around it. And even if those electrons are evenly distributed across the molecule, as two molecules approach each other, so as this one gets closer to this one, the electrons will shift around and they'll create what we call temporary dipole moments. So over here, we've got more electrons on this molecule collecting on one side, and as it approaches this molecule, the electrons on it, it will run to the other side. So that way it creates this partially positive charge on the half of the molecule that's going to interact with the partially negative charge on the other molecule. And as these move around, that constantly changes. And so these are spontaneous movements of electrons within the molecule trying to avoid the electrons on the molecules around it. And so they constantly change as these approach other molecules. And if you're in a liquid, these molecules are gonna be up against lots of other molecules. And so they start to just look like static. Um, so maybe it's a little darker over here and here, but then it changes, so it's like this, and then over here and over here. And we kind of get this average that just seems like the the static interaction between molecules. So these are very weak and they exist between all molecules. So if you're asked to decide what intermolecular forces exist between molecules in a sample, the answer will always be at least London dispersion forces. Next we have in order of strength dipole-dipole forces or dipole-dipole interactions. So these are going to be attractions between molecules that have an overall dipole moment. So formaldehyde is a great example. Um, this oxygen has a 3.5 um, electronegativity and carbon is 2.5. So there's an overall dipole moment for this molecule that puts more um, negative charge near the oxygen, and it's slightly positive on the carbon half of the molecule. So if we had a lot of these together, they would actually line up so that negative end of the molecule lined up with the positive end. And there's this opposites attract interaction between them. Um, and so again, then the next one would line up, it's, oxygen with the carbon of another molecule as they were in space near each other. And these are dipole-dipole interactions. And so this is based on the same concept as our London dispersion forces, but it's stronger. And it's stronger because these are permanent dipole moments within the molecule, so they don't keep changing. They stay the same. And so that gives us a permanent interaction that will be stronger than our London dispersion forces. Oh. And last we have hydrogen bonding interactions. These are actually um, dipole-dipole interactions. They're just so strong that we think of them separately. Um, and the name is very misleading. There's not actually a bond that is occurring. Um, and that can be uh, a hard thing to internalize after we've been talking about covalent bonding um, so recently. So these types of interactions occur when a molecule has a hydrogen bonded to an oxygen, a nitrogen, or a fluorine atom. And the hydrogen bonding interaction is actually the attraction between that hydrogen and another oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine atom on another molecule. And so the difference between these two is distance. So this is a longer distance 
in our hydrogen bonding interaction. And our hydrogen bond within our molecule is a shorter distance. And so it's much stronger. So this one right here, this green one is a covalent bond. And the blue one is our hydrogen bonding interaction. And these are going to be um, only found when there is an oxygen hydrogen, nitrogen hydrogen, or fluorine hydrogen bond in the molecules that you're looking at, the interactions between. And the reason for that is because oxygen, nitrogen, and fluorine all have very high electronegativities. And these hydrogens are all at 2.1, and so we create a very, very polar bond. So when we think of that polar bond as having a dipole moment, the partial positive charge on the hydrogen and the partial negative charge on the oxygen is just very large compared to other molecules. And that's why we get this very strong interaction um, between that hydrogen and then something that has a lone pair essentially. So it's interacting with the lone pair in a um, orbital on another molecule. And intermolecular forces play a huge role in biology. So this is DNA, and DNA is a double helix. It's two strands of, so we have a backbone here with nitrogen base pairs. It's two strands that are, are held together um, in a way that, needs, that must be broken apart and then reformed together to replicate DNA. And the... The, the glue that holds these two molecules together are just hydrogen bonding interactions between the nitrogen base pairs. Um, and these, so together, these become very, very strong, but also breakable and reformable. Um, so we'll talk about this more in, um, when we discuss solutions, but these, just as a, a snapshot, are the ion dipole interactions that kind of are um, the next progression in positive and negative attractions um, in, for, between our charges. And these would be even stronger than hydrogen bonds because it'll be the interaction of a, a partial negative charge on these, in this case, water molecules with the positive, a full charge on a cation. And so because this um, charge is larger in magnitude, so it's a full rather than partial charge, this is a stronger interaction. And the same for something that's negative. If you have a, a anion that is a negative charge, it'll interact with the positive end of water molecules and have this interaction between a partial positive charge and a complete negative charge. And again, this is stronger than a hydrogen bonding or dipole-dipole interaction because that is a full negative charge. And this is how water molecules surround ions and salts and dissolve them into solution.